Hi, my friends, and welcome to What's Up. We get together here at the Arlington Institute uh, every two weeks with Greg Braden and to have a chance to have just an unstructured, unanticipated, free-flowing chat. So what's up? What you been thinking about? I'll be very, uh, very honest with you, John, our community on this this last uh, Sunday, I attended the Celebration of Life for a, a dear friend who, who passed recently. I think some of our community may know him. Uh, his name is Robert Tennyson Stevens, Bob Stevens. I toured with Bob extensively in the, the 90s. And the thrust of his work has been on my mind uh, a lot. And it was about the power of conscious language to interact with the, the field uh, that determines our, our lives, our joy, our happiness, our abundance, or the opposite of all of those things. Bob and I used to have some really deep conversations before this was really in vogue. To, to talk about these, uh, going back into even biblical traditions, the Tower of Babel and division of languages that separated people from one another, but also the way that we use our words and how it has separated us from our own power. And I think this is a very important conversation because we are all being asked to be conscious of and to take responsibility for our relationship with the world, with the field around us. You and I have just finished a program. Penny Kelly was very, uh, she did a beautiful job in describing from a physics perspective, quantum possibilities in the field. All things exist as a potential, but it is something that we do here in this realm that collapses those waves of possibility into the vector reality that we experience today. Thoughts are an important part of that, but the words that we use ideally are a reflection, a clear and precise reflection of those thoughts. So this has been on my mind a lot about the, the kind of words we use. You know, Bob, in a very humorous way sometimes, but in a way that would cut right to the core of what our audience was working with. He would ask a question like, how many people want more money in the bank account? And of course, everybody raised their hands and says, I want more money in the bank account. Then he would remind those people that their words, every word we speak is a command to this field. So when you tell the field, I want, even though the intention may be may be good what you're saying is I want with no closure it's open ended and so the field comes back and says cool I'll let you want and want and want and want because there's no outcome that is specified <laughs> yeah I think sounds and words uh, have uh, extraordinary kind of impact that we don't fully understand uh, we've got a transition talk speak coming up here in uh, June, uh, Isabel Benaru, who uh, works with something called uh, bioprogramming, I think is the term she uses, and which she has refined, she's probably one of the best in the world at this, of uh, being able to identify and use the words and phrases that are particularly connected to different bodily functions and organs and other such things, and to literally help people heal themselves by only using words. The words drive, in a sense, this uh, kind of reality that we experience, and it is uh, consciousness is causal, and how do you kind of articulate your consciousness? Well, it's all a function of language, and I mean, and this is central to this whole business of the emergent new world, new human, because it seems to me that uh, that is at the center of this new reality that we're tr moving ourselves into, and to be able to uh, control and take advantage of and, and program this amazing kind of power that we have in our words. From a, a biology perspective, John, when we 
Just the act of speaking is actually a pretty mind-blowing skill that we learn and we do it so well that we rarely even give it a second thought. But if we really think about it, John, think, think about what we're doing every time we speak. What we do is we, we take a breath from the world around us and we invite that breath in, into our bodies in the most intimate act that you could imagine, taking something from outside of us and bringing it deep into our bodies. And we, we bring that air into our bodies and we masterfully and we skillfully compress the air in a very specific part of our body, just with the diaphragm. And then we begin to flutter the diaphragm to force the air in the opposite direction that it came from. And as it is now moving back out of our bodies, it passes over the two organs, the, the two muscles uh, that we call the, the, uh, the vocal cords and the larynx, and we vibrate those muscles in just the right way to create the acoustic wave patterns that mirror what we're thinking and what we're feeling so that the acoustic waves are actually mirroring thoughts and emotions. And then we project those acoustic waves into the world to fall upon the body and the eardrums of another being that will interpret what we're, what we're doing. And we really think about it from that perspective. It is, it's a mind blower. It's an amazing skill. There is a science to, to how we do it. And then we tie that into our most ancient and cherished spiritual traditions and, and the way that we were taught to use language to unify us as well as divide us. It opens up the door to a whole new realm of possibilities as well as how we manifest healing in our bodies and abundance in, in the world around us as we are commanding the field and commanding our own inner field as we're commanding the biology of our bodies. Well, hello there. Uh, sorry, this ended kind of abruptly, but we lost power and in the internet. And so what we're going to have is an abbreviated version of what's up and we'll come back and see you again in a couple of weeks and then we can work this for the whole time. So thank you. <laughs>